Thank you, Andrea. Our next tech talk is titled Condition Monitoring, How Sensors Are Enabling Industry 4.0 by John Tooley at TE Connectivity. John, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is John Tooley. I'm with TE Connectivity, and I am business development for IoT uh, in the TE Sensors Group. Today, we're going to be talking about condition monitoring and really how sensors are enabling uh, Industry 4.0. The topics for the day are sensors for condition monitoring, what kind of sensors are used for this, some of the challenges in harsh environments, because that's one of the biggest areas we're seeing use cases uh, that really drive value quickly for IIoT. And then I've got a couple of examples of some use cases as well as some ecosystem partners that I'd like to talk to and share with you. Um, so we'll get right started into talking about sensors. So for condition monitoring, um, you know, sensors are, sensors are the key to condition monitoring systems. Um, if you go clear back to when motors and, and factories were started, the condition monitoring was actually a maintenance worker that would be walking around uh, the factory and he would listen very carefully for uh, something going wrong. And that was your sensor back in the day. Now, clearly and luckily, we have a lot of sensors now that actually can get, give a lot more data. And IoT is, is also making it possible to aggregate the big data together and start doing predictive and prescriptive maintenance solutions as well. So the areas that we see that are strong in this are motors, pumps, uh, moving assets. Uh, that's everything from you know robots to subway train trains, uh, motors, it's compressors, it's uh, you know just plain old uh, you know AC DC motors. Uh, pumps in oil and gas, water, septic systems, um, pulp and paper mills. And then on the other side, you have fluids that are required in all of these systems to keep them running right. Um, you know, in wind turbines, gearboxes, hydraulic uh, systems, all of that. So that's another area that you want to look at. And, and from a sensor technology standpoint, uh, vibration really crosses all of these areas. You know, it's used in motors, it's used in pumps, it's used in rotating equipment, it's used in trains, pretty much all the way around you see vibration being a core metric of predicting when something is going to go wrong. Um, you know, fluid property, that's a great sensor technology that we have that will actually tell you when your fluids are getting bad. Typically, they're done on time base. So after three months, you change the oil in your car. Now there's fluids, there's fluid sensors that can go and say, hey, and instead of waiting three months, it may be good. And then you can actually extend the life of the fluids and that's better for the environment and it's lower cost for you to 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 for your operations. Uh, pressure is a key one, especially in pump applications for, you know, in a pump and oil and gas and, you know, all of those type of things, you see pressure being very important. And then some of the other uh, technologies, temperature, you know, humidity, uh, speed, and then position are also required. So, you know, this is, uh, you know, primarily most of the sensors that you see out there for condition monitoring, predictive maintenance. And when you're in hazardous environments, that actually presents another set of challenges. And this is what TE really excels at. 80% of our business is in harsh environments. And it really goes around robustness, uh, having fully encapsulated IPX rated is 67, 68 for washdowns or 66 for washdowns, uh, fully calibrated over wide temperature ranges. These things are out in the environment or on a factory floor with oils and, and you know, they aren't nice environments uh, in many cases. So they have to last they have to be reliable and they have to continuously give good data because that good data is what's going to drive the analytics engines. Um, these also require agency certifications as well. Uh, things like ATEX and CSA and Class 1 Div 1, all of those things, you really need those, especially in the oil and gas space, chemicals, gas manufacturing, to be intrinsically safe sensors. So we actually have this in wireless and in a wired portfolio as well to make sure that these will, you know, not cause any safety issues out there. Uh, cost of insulation, um, you know, that's traditionally been a challenge for some of our customers in that when you have to go to these harsh environments, you typically have to put wire, cable, 
conduit. Uh, you need somebody to go out there and bury all of that. So it can be fifty to a hundred dollars a foot, depending on where you are, just to put the cabling in, and that's also time. So you have people out there for a long time. So wireless is really enabling uh, a lot of sensors in the harsh environment space, and those are really with low power wireless LAN and WAN uh, solutions out there. The other thing that's been a limiting factor out there has been all the custom protocols in the condition monitoring space. You know, it, you know, typically there's been a lot of custom uh, variations, so there has been wireless sensors around for quite a while. Um, but lower WAN, BLE, NBIoT, LTE, uh, CAT-M, those technologies being standards are really accelerating the adoption of uh, wireless in these industrial and harsh environment spaces. Reasons for that is security. Um, you know, with these, all of these are very large standards and they will keep up with security protocols to make sure that uh, your data is secure. And it allows you to have interchangeable suppliers. So you aren't tied to one ecosystem or one product. You can, you, you know, and that long-term drives lower cost, it drives more options and, you know, and, and, and better service to the, to the OEMs. So these are some of the challenges that are out there and, and TE, uh, you know, has solutions for all of these. Now I'm going to go talk about uh, some of the use cases that we have out there just to show you some practical examples and talk a little bit about some of the sensors that we use in here. This is an example of using a 8911 wireless sensor. It's up on our webpage today. It's a piezoelectric high frequency 10 kilohertz uh, condition monitoring accelerometer. We use a partner called Exosite. We use their Exosense platform to push the data to. Um, in this particular place, this is in Europe and in, in Switzerland, um, it's actually monitoring a train bogey, uh, which is the uh, underneath carriage uh, of the trains. And it's been running around Switzerland connecting via the LoRaWAN uh, network. Um, the data it shows, it sends out the top eight peaks uh, you know, uh, via LoRaWAN, it goes to Exosense Cloud, then you download the data and then you make some analytics around it. So this is a manual, uh, what I would call a manual uh, uh, AI uh, machine learning. Uh, but basically, once you get it off of Exosense, uh, you can actually set triggers and you can actually use Exosense in a production environment to go do that as well. But, you know, we are doing that offline. But this is just one example of where we're using sensors for condition monitoring in a real application. Here's another example in oil and gas um, where we're, we're leveraging LoRa WAN and Bluetooth. You see the, the Bluetooth sensor up there at the top there, the M5600 family. That is a full intrinsically safe certified family of uh, differential gauge and absolute uh, pressure sensors. Uh, they range from 50 PSI all the way up to 15 kPSI with a variety of different fittings on there as well. You know, that coupled with the LoRa wind uh, vibration sensor, we've worked with a partner of ours called Mach Fu on the gateway side um, and their Mach IO to really do this uh, oil pad automation uh, solution out there. And what you find where LoRa makes it really nice is, is that some of the assets are pretty far away and, and leveraging the benefits of Bluetooth and the benefits of LoRa together in the same system, you're able to deploy a system at a, at a very low and reasonable cost out there where you really couldn't have done that before, uh, you know, using existing solutions. Um, so this is just another example. And, and if you see there as well, uh, there's actually a tank level sensor that is wired. The Mach IO there has a pretty neat solution that actually will power wired sensors, and that's a drop in tank level sensor that goes in there as well. So, this is another real life example. Uh, it's been deployed uh, out there, uh, and we see customers, it, it's the proof of value for customers has been there. Then, the last one, uh, this is going to be a product that's going to be offered by one of our partners as well as a demo kit for system integrators and customers that want to very quickly test and deploy. And, and really are trying to figure out what the best solution is from a LoRa WAN or, or a vibration uh, or LoRa WAN or Bluetooth or, or wired solution. So this is working with partners of Eurotech, who is a leading edge uh, gateway uh, pro, uh, edge IoT supplier. Exosite, who I've already mentioned before, who is a no-code cloud analytics provider for uh, the industrial uh, space. Um, and what this platform does that's different than what you see out there today is it is 
All of us are global leaders in the spaces that we're in. It is a complete industrial solution. So all of this stuff is made for the industrial market. Um, you know, the vibration sensor, you know, is IP rated. The pressure sensor is IP67 rated. The temperature probes, everything is really deployed and ready to be put into an environment that is industrial uh, ready. The gateway is also industrial. And then the ExoSense is designed for condition monitoring applications. Uh, and um, it's scalable as well. It, it's out of the box. It all connects. It all works. You plug it in, sign up to ExoSense, and then, you know, boom, you can actually very quickly see the data on the sensors. Um, and it is also very flexible. So it's not a system that you can use this and then have to go to something else when you deploy in production. This is actually a deployable solution. And the fact that you can use the Eurotech gateway, you can use ExoSense in a production environment, you can scale it, you can add different sensors, you can add multiple sensors. If you like the ones here, you can add more wired sensors. There's a lot of different options you can do here. Uh, depending on your use case and depending on what you're doing, uh, you know, uh, you know what you're trying to accomplish at the end. So this is going to be available. It's uh, it, it's actually in, uh, in in pilot stage today in some locations. Uh, it's going to be orderable actually as a part number, um, you know, on uh, the Eurotech website starting in October. So we're really excited about this. We think this will enable our customers, system integrators, and people to be able to use and deploy our sensors very quickly um, in the industrial space and, and test out the wireless protocols. So with that, um, you know, you know, please reach out and connect with us. Um, you know, our website is te.com. If you have any specific questions for uh, on IoT, we have a dedicated email site set up. It's called IoT support at te.com. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, you know, reach out to us and uh, hope to hear from you. And thank you very much.